Shadow Moon. You must choose which way your destiny unfolds. Where are you headed? Like saying, uh, one way. Shadow? Your father would like a word. Hello, my boy. I don't do your bidding anymore. I need you, Shadow. Stay close. You can get lost in here. You have a powerful destiny. You attract powerful enemies. The time will come when we rise together as one. You have no idea who I am. I am a god. Hi, my name is Gil Robertson, president of the African-American Film Critics Association. And today we have a real treat for you as AFCA Roundtable members will talk to uh, the stars of the popular star series, American Gods, Ricky Widow and Yatidi Bidaki. Uh, starting from my left, we have Sharonda Williams in Atlanta. We have Katia Woods in Philadelphia. We have Carolyn Hines in Toronto. We have Brandon in just outside of Frankfurt, Germany. We have Janita in um, Indiana. <laughs> we have Ruben in Miami and um, we're ready to get started. I will see you guys on the other time, on the other side. And you're tidy, you're tidy. I hope I got your name right. Tidey, yeah, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough one. Okay, you Tidey Bedaki. There we go. All right, cool. Just call her queen. That's all. That's all we queen. do. That's right. That's what she is. She's a queen to be. What's that from? What's that a reference to? Coming to America. Yeah. I love this country. <laughs> I mean, how do I even follow that up question? But I'll, I'll try my best. Um, I really. This. <laughs> I feel like for both of your characters, I always feel so bad because I feel as though your characters are just trying to mind their business and live their best lives, but somehow danger just always comes to find you. And so I really wanted to know for both of your characters, especially after we ended at episode three, how was it really reading the script to really see um, Yatide that your character actually built with, she actually calls on Ricky's character. I was kind of shocked about that. So I wanted you both to talk about what it was like pairing up for this episode and really also too, what was your reaction to knowing that this is the person that you called on in your time of need? And Yatide, I can we can start with you. Oh, wow. Um, first off, great question. Um, <laughs> it's, it's always such uh, a shock and a joy and there's so many different emotions whenever you get a new script. Um, we, we've seen Bill Chris go through some hard times so it's, I mean, there is so much love and appreciation for her. I have so much love for her personally. So whenever I see any tough times coming up, my, my heart kind of goes out to her. Um, but what I do really enjoy is whenever th there is that connection between Shadow Moon and Bill Quist. And um, that uh, earlier sequence that we saw even in episode three of the, um, of, of the dream sequence. Uh, that was an incredible uh, joy to play with because we're looking at how all these things are jumping out of, of these capabilities are jumping out for Shadow, this deeper understanding, a deeper connection with himself and uh, things that exist within himself. And I love the idea that the two characters are able to bring out uh, certain parts of each other and that they're, they're able to continuously connect over time and space. And I think there's something really beautiful about that message. So 
what does it mean uh, to, to have Bilquis reach out to, to Shadow? I mean, first off, who wouldn't? Have you seen Mr. Ricky Whittle? Um, <laughs> but the, Good makeup. I love, <laughs> right? But I love the deeper ties as well. I love that they're, 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 they're both reaching into their roots and they're both finding the parts within themselves that further connect them to each other. Yeah. Um... There's a lot of parallels. There's, there's a, a beautiful kind of hypocrisy between the characters that um, in, in certain pairs and certain new dynamics that we have this season, um, where you have kind of Salim and, and Laura kind of giving this sage relationship advice about letting go without actually letting go of their own kind of struggles and problems and projecting all their stuff onto each other with Shadow and, and, and Bilquis. I feel those two have been very much parallel this season um, and there's a real connection. Um, and I love the fact that they have uh, kind of this kind of similar journey of self-discovery. And what we are starting to see in, the, in this episode is that they are connected on, on, on various levels and they are reaching out to each other. And what that means going forward is very exciting for myself and then, the, you know, the fans moving forward. I don't know if your TJ is actually bothered. She's, you know, she's, she doesn't like me really that much. I mean, you... <laughs> I'm always super confident. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it is, but it is fantastic. And, you know, they're, they're both um, going to be kind of linked by the Orisha, um, who are an incredible part that has been brought in by uh, Charles Egley this season uh, with Neil Gaiman. Um, I feel like in the pre-season before the, the show started, they had a lot of time to discuss where we were going and when I went into the writing room and saw kind of the arc of, of this season through this season and into the next and how the shadow is going to be guided by the Orisha and how Bilquis is going to become a part of him finding himself it got me very excited because she is a character that I've not had much uh screen time with and someone I was very excited to work with because obviously you know I would say this if she wasn't here she's an incredibly talented woman and to work opposite her was so much fun because I'm working with you know, my best friend there. And then you're just reacting off that talented performance, which makes my job easier, you know, because everything just becomes real because she's so real. Um, and they just grow together. And it's about kind of the world has defined us. It's, I'm, I'm, I find Bill Chris is a little bit of a, a metaphor for America, you know, in, in episode one of season one, Wednesday says, um, America's the only country in the world that doesn't know what it is. You know, and I think we definitely saw that in 2020, where finally it was it was shown a mirror and had to look in a reflection and didn't like what it saw. Um, and it's not until it owns that history and sees that reflection and all the all the flaws and everything until it can actually welcome it, take it on board, and move forward uh, in a stronger form. And with with Bilquis, the world has kind of defined her, and she kind of lost herself. Um, and this episode moving forward along with Shadow, because she kind of helps Shadow once she's found herself and her strength, they find, you know, they're, they're, lo they're looking within uh, instead of looking without for the answers. And I think that's a very important message for, for anyone watching the show um, out there when, you know, we're so molded by social media and whatever people think of us when it's really no one else's business and we shouldn't even care what they think. Um, so it's a beautiful message that sometimes the answer is, is within. And with Shadow and Bilquis, we kind of have this beautiful parallel where we're helping each other kind of, well, I think more Bilquis helping Shadow, um, but we're both looking inside for that answer to move forward. Thank you so much. I just want happiness for both of your characters and everyone. <laughs> Thank you, I think that. that too. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Katia Woods, Cup of Social. My question is for you, Ricky, your character. Oh. He's so trying to find his own way, but they just will not let him live. You know, he cannot get peace. Talk a little bit about how he's trying to navigate to still find his own journey, but he's constantly, like it's being haunted. He's being sucked in. He's questioning things, you know, he's like, can I trust him? Uh, can I not? Like, how do you, I mean, it's gotta be fun to play, but just as a persona, you're always, you're never settled. Yeah, um, I took a huge risk when, when I started with Shadow Moon and I worked with Brian Fuller and Michael Green in season one to 
a huge arc because obviously this is a, an adaptation of the incredible book by Neil Gaiman. So I know the story and I know his arc and I know where he's going to be. But as an actor, the fun part was kind of breaking that down and building him up slowly in season three. Um, I really kind of get to play and add these kind of elements um, where he is kind of taking more charge of, of his life. And we see him this season push back on Wednesday. You know, his, his father wasn't just working in a local bowling alley. He's Odin. He's a god. He could have been there at any time. He lost his mother at 15 for, uh, to, can to cancer. And he lost his wife, who was actually um, killed by Odin. So, of course, there's no trust there whatsoever. Um, and that has to be kind of played by Shadow. And that's been a lot of fun playing opposite McShane with, uh, sorry, Mr. McShane, um, by having that kind of tongue in cheek and that great chemistry and camaraderie where, you know, he's kind of a petulant teenager pushing back, just saying, um, afraid not, Dad. And he's hanging up phones. He's refusing to do anything that he wants. And, you know, I love in this month, in this episode where I'm, you know, he's looking for Bill Quist. The only way to find him is to speak to Dad. But even then, it's like, just give me the answer by, he, does, he doesn't even, you know, it's, it's, I love that kind of relationship and, and a proactive Shadow this season, you know, where um, Chick and Neil have really kind of helped Shadow get stronger and, and aid that kind of progression that we see in him. He's, he's growing and he's becoming um, what he is, what I've projected him to become. Um, he now knows who his father is. He now knows he's a demigod. What does that mean for him? He's rejected his destiny. He's tried to live a, long, a normal life, but I think Bill Quist is going to help him realize that you can't run from your destiny and, and who you are is always going to be who you're going to be. And once you accept that, you know, it's, it's what kind of God do you want to be? And Bill Quist is there to kind of help guide him with the Orisha to find that inner strength, that positivity, that love that Bill Quist carries within her. Um, she's a very, very important character in that growth that Shadow is going to go through this season. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to see how he's going to work it all out. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carolyn in Toronto for Sir Here's What Happened podcast. And my question is for Yatidi. Um, as a woman who is not only Black but has Nigerian heritage, what is it, what is it like for you to be able to play a character like Bill Quist? who's been through a lot in the first two seasons, especially in season two, but in season three, you're going to be able to play a character who's tapping into Nigerian heritage with the Orisha, which is a part of Yoruba culture. Um, can you tell me the significance of that for you? Oh, um, I mean, when they told me that the Orishas were going to make an appearance this season, um, I mean, joy is an understatement. Um, as you mentioned, I'm, you know, I'm born in Nigeria, lived there until I was 12. And so I've had a lot of time hearing those stories from the elders, um, hearing about these different individuals that we get to see played by incredible actors. I can't wait for everybody to meet um, Horizon Guardiola, um, Karen Glaive, Bridget Ogundupe, who also, also has some Nigerian roots. Um, and, and the idea that we get to meet these, uh, these deities uh, fr from the ancestors, from, from the motherland, um, that was incredible. And yes, you did mention Bilkus has been through quite a bit of a journey. Um, she, you know, in the first season was purely trying to survive. And then the second season, we see her you know, starting to thrive somewhat, but this season with the help of her and her family, I'll say, um, she then finally finds her drive. And being able to work with these kinds of ideas, these kinds of mythologies, um, things that are not purely from a Western viewpoint, mm -hmm. Um, things that also are expressed in ways that are not Eurocentric, um, even the visuals and, and the, the colors and all of the different elements of storytelling um, start to go more into uh, what, you know, what they call like epic storytelling, which is <coughs> the non-European, non-Eurocentric views uh, that are usually used. Um, so all of this, has been, not only does it deeply resonate 
but it feels incredibly important that we get to share this side of ourselves. Um, it feels incredibly important that we get to look through uh, a different lens um, and we get to share with individuals um, an, another viewpoint. Uh, so to, to boil it down, <laughs> it's, it feels um, not only a, like a joy, but there's a, a certain amount of privilege to that too. Um, and there's a lot of care that goes around that. Um, and Ricky can tell you as well, you know, the fact that shadow really gets to go on this, this further discovery uh, journey. Um, it also brings us in as viewers uh, in, into a way of remembering, um, which I think is so important right now that there have been so many parts of ourselves that society, that colonization, that, um, that this whole Westernized process has often forced us to leave behind. Even as an immigrant, when mm -hmm. you first get here, there, there's a whole lot of, for lack of a better word, sometimes it feels like brainwashing. Uh, this, you forget this part of you, forget this way of being. Um, and I feel like in the remembering moments, that allows for the ability to fully step into your power because you are then able to take the moments from the past and fully meld them with this new knowledge from the present and evolve that into something um, that is full and that is, um, that is many-sided, that is not uh, one-dimensional. And I think that's so important. I can't wait to see because to see, I don't think I've ever seen the Orishas represented on Western TV before. So that'll be interesting, especially the hairstyles. Their hair has a bomb this season. So I can't wait to see what they do with their hairstyles as well. <laughs> I mean, you can see how excited I am. Um, I can't wait for everyone to meet the Orishas. And Wale was in there as well as Chango. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. There you Good go. morning. Thank Good you. Morning. Good morning. Brandon Jones, LRM Online. Um, the question I have for you guys is someone who is, uh, was a fan of what you guys did in season one and a fan of the book as well. I, I, I've considered myself a lapsed fan, which is a, I think is a good term for a show about gods. What would you say to bring someone back in the season three? What would be your elevator pitch to, to bring somebody back in? Ooh, Ricky? Oh, you're gonna throw this at me, are you? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I've heard your answer on this and it's pretty darn great. She's lying, but I'll say it. Um, <laughs> no, to be, there's, there are so many different ways to bring you back, to be quite honest. Um, I've said it's a massive re return to form. I'm a very honest person sometimes too honest. I'm almost kind of on the spectrum where, you know, it's offensive because I'm like, how do I look in this? Your, your ankles look bad. Um, change your hair. What are you doing? Red is not your color. Um, and I'll probably get in trouble from the PR, but I really don't think season two hit the heights of season one. And I think season three has already surpassed season two. Um, and season three is really looking like an incredible piece of work that I am so incredibly proud of for many reasons many reasons the time that nick that nick uh the chick sorry chick eggly and neil gaiman had in, in the preseason, i think allowed them because they had way more time than we did it before season two and it allowed them to really develop a story a real focus on where the story's going where the character's going and it was character driven i feel it's a very meticulous roller coaster that sends you up and down and every curve is planned in season three. Season two was kind of a little bit of a treasure hunt where it was a bit mishmash over here, there and everywhere. It was full of just long monologues where characters I felt spoke at each other. Season three, I feel you find characters actually speaking to each other, listening and having a conversation. So there is a beautiful moment with Bilquis and Shadow where we're still talking about powerful, magical things, uh, cultural things. The fact that Bilquis is finding herself and 
not allowing people to define her. She's defining herself, but it's a conversation. And for me, that brings it ground, makes it more grounded, and that makes it more relatable to an audience because all of a sudden you can relate to these conversations. It's not just these kind of crazy, crazy kind of long speeches that are fantastic for audition pieces. But what we need to have is a relatable conversation that you can follow. Um, and so for me, that connection between the characters makes it so much stronger that you care more about their conversations. You care more about their characters. And so for me, the writing has just been incredible. And if you look at our cast, it's, it's, it's very diverse. What we were able to facilitate this season was that diversity off camera, uh, behind the camera, in that writing room. And what they did was create a writing room that was roughly 10% cisgendered straight white male and the rest was female, black, Latin, um, native, LGBTQ, formerly incarcerated, um, biracial. And what that does is give you authentic representation telling true stories. It's about inclusivity, it's about representation and about those voices giving us the voices. It's about, and what we talk about in this season with the Arisha, it's about the we as opposed to the I. And that's a really powerful, mm -hmm. powerful thing that we've done. Um, it's the small things that we've done as well. Even things like Shadow's come, there's, there's a time jump and Shadow comes back with a full beard and hair. He's hiding from the FBI, the, the, the authorities. He's it's a physical representation of him breaking free of the shackles of, of being a, an inmate from prison where they shave their head. Everyone has to look the same. He's breaking free of the old, of the old kind of forced situation. Um, and what they did straight away was they brought in Ethelyn Joseph, uh, a black woman, to deal with my hair because it's those little things. We need to have that representation in every department, everywhere. And what she was able to do is, is bring that kind of authenticity, that representation. It needs to be completely, we, we keep posting black squares. We keep sending our thoughts and prayers to people in so many situations. But what we need to be doing is to actually stop the talking and start kind of following through with some action. And I am incredibly proud of this show because of what it does off the camera in all departments, which has translated on camera to an incredible cast that has already been doing its thing, but has taken it to another level. You know, it's this, this cast, I am so proud of it. I'm so passionate about it. When you have the, the beauty and talent of Yatide, you have Ashley Reyes, a new character um, who, 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 who's come in. We have wonderful new characters in Dominique Jackson. We have Danny Trejo, Lila, Lila Lauren, you know, we have these incredible characters coming in and we have that representation in the writing room to write for them. So for me, it just feels true. It feels real. And the stories, because they had that time at the beginning, is so powerful and, and thought out to, to the point that I already know how this moves on into season four, which is great for an actor to kind of have a beginning, a middle and an end, because in TV, it's so kind of fluid. Sometimes things just get thrown all over the place. And this is the first time where I've actually felt like I know where I'm going and I can prepare properly as an actor. So what you're getting is representation, diversity, story, passion, and this cast is just phenomenal. And I love them with every part of my being and I'm so proud. And like I say, I'm an honest person. I told you I, 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 I didn't think season two reached season one. It doesn't reach season three. I am really proud of season three. Good, thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Appreciate and it. And thank you for your service. Uh, I know you're a military man. I've got nothing but love for you guys and that should never not be said. Thank you again. I appreciate your support. Thank you. Hi guys, my name is Ruben. I'm in Miami right now. And um, you say something that I really liked and uh, it's like in first season, uh, Shadow and Bilkis, they were my two favorite characters. They were opposite characters and Shadow, it was like, searching something with his wife and something happened and things happened, too many things happened to him. Uh, as an actor, you have to, sometimes you have to create a character, but you are creating character, you both uh, actors creating character from, from guts, from something that we never seen or, or, or like imagined. Like you can create your own God based on your beliefs. How you two as an actors, you sit with a writer and create 
how this character is gonna be, how this character is gonna look, and the, the behaving of this character through all three seasons. I mean, first off, we've got, uh, we, we can't not mention uh, Neil Gaiman, um, who is, as we call him, the God's father. He's the person that came in with the source material that we, we get to play with. Um, and so being a huge Neil Gaiman fan myself, being a huge geek, I had you know, read this book years ago and Bill was definitely made an impression. And um, I can't believe that we found actual shadow in real life what he actually <laughs> and talks like. So that's, you know, <laughs> that's a huge plus for casting. Um, that was Orly Sidowitz and um, Marjorie, Marjorie Simkin. Uh, Marjorie Simkin, thank you. And they were incredible. Um, but you had the source material um, and you had some certain ideas that went into it. And for example, with Bilquis, we had this Queen of Sheba concept um, and so I was able to dig into that. Uh, as far as with the writing, we've been so lucky where we have individuals that also come in with all of their incredible knowledge and um, ideas and get to collaborate. And it really ties into this season and that concept that Ricky mentioned of I as we, um, where you have something that is only strengthened and um, deepened by different individuals being able to come in and uh, add their, their expertise as well. Then you have, again, as Ricky mentioned, you have hair and you have makeup. Um, Ethelene Jeffs, Joseph, yes, who also brought in Charlene, who's incredible. I have yes. to shout out as well. That lady could braid in like 40 minutes. It was- She was amazing. amazing. <laughs> um, blessings. But... <laughs> so every morning you come in morning, and she says blessings. blessings and she just brings a smile to your face. Big love to every department. I love this family. Exactly, every department uh, that's makeup as well. That's, I mean, there are moments that you'll see in here where you go into close up and Colin Penman or M Emmy winning Colin Penman as we call him, um, he, he then created designs uh, based off of a peacock feather for eyeshadow. And these are tiny details that, you know, people at home may not always see, but they add so much depth to the character. So you, you mentioned being able to speak with the writers, which is incredible and, 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 and such a privilege, uh, but it's also uh, so many different departments going into um, layers and layers that add to the characters. So by the time you get to the third season, it does feel like you are taking that, that journey with the character where every element down to nail polish uh, which you might have noticed, you'll see in episode one for Belquis, episode one and two, um, and then you start to see it chip away. And that is also revealing that there are further, that she's further returning to herself. I mean, uh, Belquis is kind of scary in the first season as a, as a, as a guy, like. <laughs> in the first day, as a guy. <laughs> You know, that's not the first time I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I still hear it sometimes for uh, this season as well. But I, I, I love that though. I love that you see this idea of love that it can be, you know, it can be one thing and it can be, but a lot of people see it as very passive, but it it's also has such strength and such awe-inspiring heights within it as well. And I think that's women. And I mean, speak of black women, there's awe inspiring individuals all around that are continually doing things that feel almost impossible and doing it continuously. And so I love that Bill Quiz is this character that um, is often underestimated, is often, um, being brought in and tied in by other people's expectations um, and then always continues to defy them and always continues to liberate herself within it. Um, and so, but this is all something that occurs because we get to work with so many talented individuals and people that are as passionate 
uh, about the characters as we are. Um, and we see that goal uh, as a through line with all the different characters as they go through their journeys. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a double edged sword because I feel that um, in the book the only constant really is Shadow Wednesday and Laura, and so I feel this kind of responsibility to Neil Gaiman and his fans who have kind of had this book in their heart since two thousand and one to portray a character that they're familiar with to, to portray Shadow Moon as they know. Um, I worked with Brian Fuller and Michael Green in season one to kind of spruce him up a little bit for TV um, because in the book we're always in his head and that would be a very kind of slow show. Um, so I've always felt obligated to kind of keep him a little bit more flatlined. Um, and like I said before, I, I kind of like to layer him slowly. So, you know, a season four, you're going to get full on Avenger. Um, no, uh, <laughs> but it's, 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 it's kind of building that slowly. Uh, um, Whereas I feel a lot of the other characters like Bilquis, like a tech boy, like uh, Salim and, and Laura uh, and Wednesday, they've been able to come off book a little bit more. Um, Shadow's the one who's in Lakeside. I'm following my favorite part of the book of Neil Gaiman's book, which is in Lakeside. Um, but we do still kind of drift here and there. And that's, it's kind of like Neil had his kids and then they got to a certain age and he's letting them go off and, and you know, they've moved out of the house and, he said, go and be you. And, you know, it's, it's a beautiful liberating thing for the creator of your world, the creator of your character to say, no, that's, that's yours now. So I trust you. I believe in you and go and be you. And, and he's allowed um, all of our characters like, like Bill Quist, who's now kind of really coming to the forefront. I don't think, and I don't, I don't want to speak for, for you, Yatide. I'll let, I'll let you say it, but I, I Personally, I feel this is the most powerful and seen she's been in three seasons. Um, I was saying before we came online that, and I always say it, but it is a gift to work with this talent and to see her develop a character beyond what was on the page. And she really comes to the forefront as a powerful, strong character, uh, this beautiful kind of deity who's, finding herself and her storyline this season that she's been given uh, and written for is, is just so wonderful to watch on so many different levels that she's finding herself. She's finding her inner strength, which I feel inspires black women worldwide and, and women in general. And then she's using that to, to give love. She, she's not, it's not, it's not just an individual thing. She's not just content with that. She then wants to spread that love around and, and kind of, she's a beautiful message for the world. And, you know, I have nothing but admiration for actors like Yatide who were able to kind of bring that to a character because it could have gone so many different ways. And that's like, as, as we mentioned with our incredible casting, where they got it completely perfect. They found an actress who was stunning and incredible and able to not only give you a book character, but take that, run with it and create something so much more and, and magical. And I know Neil Gaiman is obsessed with your T-Day and her performances because he's something so proud eye. of her. I mean, huh? I'm not crying. There's just something in my eye. That's not I'm cute. not crying. You're crying. Stop I'm not it. Crying. If you cry, I'll cry. Don't do this. <laughs> no crying, Ricky. There's no crying no. in American Gods. No, that's not there's, true. There's no crying in baseball. Um, but no, I, I, I genuinely, genuinely have nothing but admiration for all those guys. And sometimes it's a little bit of jealousy because I do have to kind of feel like I have to stick to the book and I frame all these colorful white you know beautiful gods doing all these kind of fun crazy things but they've also allowed me to kind of have some fun too and like I say I'm slowly building this character it was a bit of a risk at first um, but now I'm able to kind of add these layers it's been a lot of fun I'm working with with Neil Gaiman working with Chig Egli and and that writing team and and even the actors as well because I can go home and learn my lines I can know that script back to front front to back but if I come to set and your teenager hits me with something that I'm not expecting, which sometimes she does because she's just wonderful and likes to think outside the box, you have to react. And so something new and fresh and beautiful comes out. And in our show, you, you can just roll with it. You can just kind of ad lib and, and go a little bit. And so, you know, you have to stay on your toes as well. So sometimes it, it's thought out and planned with our, with our creative team. Other times it's stuff that you kind of work on and research yourself. And then sometimes you have that magical moment on set 
where something beautiful just forms out of nothing with between a, a director and, and, and the cast. Right, and I have to add here because, you know, um, Ricky, the way that you play Shadow is such an incredible backbone for the show. Um, and it's, it's not an easy feat. I don't think a lot of people understand um, yeah. <laughs> the amount that goes into to what Shadow Moon does because he has to ground this, this world that's filled with all kinds of strange deities and ideas as well, and also be the lens that the viewer um, looks through. And so I, th I think it always, I'm always amazed uh, when I see the work that you do and I'm, I'm particularly um, excited for everyone to see this season and the agency and everything that Shadow has. But I wanted to also add to that, we're talking about some writers um, and I, I know people will now have been able to see, see episode four, uh, which was written by Nick Gilly. And Wonderful. he is incredible. One of the people that made me initially uh, incredibly excited for this season because Ricky and I uh, got to see a show that he had written, uh, mm -hmm. a man show called uh, Goddess Black. And, you know, going into a new season, you know, there's always some moments of trepidation. What exactly is going to happen when you haven't seen the scripts yet? You know, what's that going to uh, shape into? But after seeing this incredible performance um, uh, and just the layers that went into the writing, the um, ideology, the intelligence, all of that, I, I couldn't wait to get started. And so I just wanted to give a, a special shout to, to Nick Gilly um, because his, uh, I, I, everyone should have seen the episode by now and his work is wonderful. And a big shout out to his, his, his new project as well, Bedtime Stories. It's uh, black-university.com where they're kind of uh, doing some really beautiful work um, and kind of trying to change the perception uh in life of, of various words that kind of have shaped society uh and it's about reclaiming that power and that love thank you guys so um hi both of you um i'm a member of well call myself a member of the god squad the fandom online um my question for for you both of you we've lost um we've lost some great people in the interim and the fandom is still talking about it what words do you have for the fandom who are still you know mourning the or the loss of the Jen and Nancy and you know we, and we just lost Cloris Leachman of course you know and, and I know that there's a funeral, oh. funeral for her character but um what, what words do you have for fandom for fans who are like mourning the loss of um some of the characters in the in in the interim and and what can they what can kind of they can kind of look forward to in this season um, with you two? No teats. Um, first off, with the God Squad, and hey, good to see ya. Um, <laughs> there's first of all a whole lot of gratitude. We have some incredible fans. Uh, we have fans that have um, stuck with us through thick and thin, and there's so much love uh, for that. And we also have. Uh, a fandom that is deeply thoughtful and that cares about things. Um, and I, th I think that is so important to celebrate. And it's, it's something that does not uh, always occur in fandoms. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I wanna take a moment to celebrate that. As for things that you get to see this season, um, I mean, we can't, I, I know people haven't seen <clears throat> five yet yeah you can be vague if you need to be you know yeah <laughs> okay yeah i'm gonna be very vague with it uh but i i will uh, agree with the sentiment that ricky has brought up before um i felt such pride in episode five uh i was watching um ibis and i'm watching salim and i'm watching you know uh laura i'm watching shadow um and there were moments I have never gotten to see with these characters before. And depths that I've never gotten experience with these characters before. And it made me almost emotional. Um, and that is something that I can't wait for everybody 
to to get a chance to experience as well. Um, and I, I will, you know, I'll say even for for Bill Quis, there were things that we haven't gotten to see. Um, and so for fans that have waited so long to learn about these individuals and to learn more about them and to see them uh, achieve heights that they have never um, really gotten to before, I, I would say, hold on, <laughs> we're, we're coming. And I'm sure I'm quoting a song, um, but that the, the wait is worth it. Um, and, and there's so much more coming. So I would say, yes, gratitude, first off. We're so thankful for everybody, um, but also there are gonna be so many beautiful surprises and I, I can't wait until we can celebrate them all together. Love that, thank you. Ricky, do you have anything that you wanna add to that? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you mentioned, you mentioned characters we lost. Um, Tragically, we have lost Christ Leachman, uh, and I just wanted to send my love and prayers to all of her family and friends and anyone that knew her and worked with her because she was an absolute beauty, a true light that was so much fun. I celebrated her 90th birthday uh, first thing in the morning, about one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning or something crazy. She's making jokes, a 90-year-old woman still working in the early hours in the morning and cracking jokes, but that's who she was. She was so much fun. I didn't I honestly, as a, as a Brit, didn't, wasn't aware uh, too much of, of Cloris until, until I came to the country um, and instantly took her to my heart. An, an incredible woman. And I just wanted to say that she'll be very, very much missed. And I'm, I'm glad I got the opportunity to work with such a beautiful light. Um, and then, you know, with, with, with other characters, as I, as I said, it, this is an adaptation of, the, of Neil Gaiman's book. You know, the only constants were... were um, Shadow, Wednesday, and, and Laura. Um, everything else is, 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 is these characters kind of come and go, and, and that we've had this incredible opportunity to bring in such fantastic talent from day one all the way to, to this season. I mentioned all the actors that are, are, are going to be featuring this season. Um, we've just seen kind of live Dana uh, uh, added, and we, like I said, Yorisha arrived this, se this, this season with, with Karen, with uh, Brigitte, and Horizon. Um, you know, which is which is all very exciting, and lots of people who I look up to. You know, I don't know how many Danny Trejo films I've seen. <laughs> it's crazy, but it's a lot of fun. But from day one, you know, we we have these characters in Neil's books that kind of cross into Shadow's path and guide him one way or another, and then you know, kind of disperse. And and some of my favorites, like like you mentioned, I I, I miss you know Musa Kresh, the Jin. Um, we have characters like like Easter with Kristen Genoa. Um, one of my favorites uh, is uh, Jonathan uh, Tucker, who played uh, Loki. Um, but in true American Gods fashion, no, it, this is the world of gods and magic. My wife has come back from the dead <laughs> before. Um, there are definitely people that, that, that will return. Um, and that's always the plan, you know, is, is, is we're following the book and, and that's what we want to, you know, we want to do. And so, there are characters that, that don't, um, that have had their moment and, and you have to kind of just enjoy those moments, you know? Um, we've, you know, Mad Sweeney was, was incredible. Uh, Pablo Schreiber is one of the best actors I've ever worked with. Um, and I just wanna say props to Pablo and big love on Halo. And I wish him all the best of luck for that because I'm really excited. That guy is a tank. He's a machine, an acting machine. Um, but again, this is American Gods and you never know when these characters will come back. You know, we love all our, our American Gods family, uh, be that our beautiful, amazing fans who just give us nothing but love. As Yatide has, has mentioned, we've got an intelligent fan base. That's the most important thing. We have, so, you don't have to spoon feed. They can, they can figure things out. And that's what makes this show so beautiful is that we don't have to spoon feed them. We can, we can make it mystical and, 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 and tough to figure out. You kind of figure it, things out along with Shadow, along with Bill Quiz. Um, and so, you know, I, there's a lot kind of going on out there, but I, I'd like to think that the fans are intelligent enough to know exactly what's going on um, and to trust the process, to trust in, the, in, in our actors and in our creative team. Um, because I think season three is, 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 is evidence. We, we, we have a, a saying in England, uh, the proof is in the pudding, which is quite basically, <clears throat> no one said anything because we want to say it to show you the show. There's no better evidence 
than to just watch this show and see the talent, the diversity, the stories, the power, the history, the culture, everything that we're bringing this season to prove that we are a massive return to form. We're back on track. We're exciting. It's, it's fun. And as I said before, I, I, I couldn't be more proud of this incredible family of our fans at home uh, watching around the world and across America. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting, getting back and, and, and finishing Neil Gaiman's incredible story. Absolutely. You today and Rick, Ricky, uh, we thank you for your time as well. On behalf of the world's largest group of Black film critics, uh, thank you for watching and have a great day. Stay blessed, guys. Thank you so much. You too. Bye.